The leak of a draft opinion that appears to suggest the Supreme Court is set to overturn Roe v. Wade has sparked big reaction from people on both sides of the debate. Abortion supporters and opponents have been demonstrating outside the high court since the leak was reported Monday night. As news of the draft, which Chief Justice John Roberts has confirmed is authentic, motivated them to pour into the streets. The question now becomes, will the debate raging over abortion rights motivate voters to show up at the polls come midterms? Harry Nelson joins us now to break down the impact the draft opinion could have on the elections. He is the founder and managing partner of the Nelson Hardiman Law Firm. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Ron. Of course. So, you know, the response, obviously, to this leak has been overwhelming. We've been watching it unfold, right, from both sides here. So in your opinion, how will this impact the midterm elections? So it's an interesting question. This is obviously a huge uh, victory for um, for for the right and you know for the conservative movement, um, and so a lot of people are predicting that we'll see a um, a significant Democratic turnout to respond to this. That this is really going to be something that activates the Democratic base. We'll have to wait and see because we you know the midterms historically are a tough time for the incumbent party. Um, so we so nobody's been predicting that this was really a a midterm that was looking good for the Democrats, but this might be. Uh, a difference maker. So you're saying here that for voters who are on the fence, you think that this leak could sway them one way or the other? Well, I, I certainly think that um, a significant, you know, a, a, a majority of Americans supported uh, uh, the right to abortion, and we are now going to see this, you know, in play in, in a lot of states. So there's going to be a lot of unhappy uh, people, you know, it, 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 really concerned, particularly about the right of, of, of lower income women in the red states that um, are expected to, uh, to e that either already have a, a what's called a trigger ban that's going to take effect as soon as the decision comes down or shortly thereafter will uh, put a ban in place, um, limit abortion and really make it hard for, for particularly lower income women, women of color in those states to get access to abortion. So I think I think that's going to be the the main source of unhappiness and concern for uh, you know particularly in, in American healthcare. And Harry, if you don't mind, I know that 13 states have passed those so-called trigger laws. Can you flesh that out for us and explain exactly what that means? Yeah. So the 13 states, all of which are what we commonly call the red states, you know, particularly southern uh, southern and midwestern states, have all passed laws that do not that take effect that basically were preparing for a decision that abortion would be a decision at the state level. And and so the laws have already been passed to say that if the Supreme Court gives the states the right to limit abortion severely or prohibit abortion, uh, that th those states have already passed laws that will immediately take effect, meaning there's no further action necessary. The, 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 the decision itself will be a trigger to for the law to come into effect essentially severely limiting or banning abortion in those 13 states. So in the meantime, as we wait for this decision to come down, where do state abortion laws stand? And where do state abortion laws stand if Roe v. Wade is overturned? So we, so, so there's the, the 13 states that have the, the, these already have severe laws or bans in place. There's a slightly larger number of blue states like California uh, where I am, that, uh, that that have put in laws to protect abortion rights. And then there are about uh, at least something like 20 states that are sort of hanging in the balance where the issue is a closer call uh, and we're going to have to wait and see. And I think those those states are all going to be the battlegrounds, right? The lines are going to be really clearly drawn between your New York, California, uh, protecting abortion rights, your Mississippi's and Louisiana and Texas really severely limiting abortion rights. And then it's going to be those, those, those middle ground states where the battle is going to be fought, uh, fought heavily. So in the meantime, getting back to the midterms here, what does this mean for other important issues that are out there? Do you feel that they're going to be overshadowed as the country waits for the high court's final decision? And speaking more broadly here, because our country is already so divided, how much of an impact do you think this is all going to have on that divide? Look, I think this is certainly another move forward in greater polarization among Americans and a sense that there's really a tug of war between two very different visions of America going on. Um, I think this is going to be a really interesting issue for the midterms because we know that the, the truest swing voters 
uh, in uh, uh, in America, if you will, who go back and forth between parties, and that's getting to be a smaller and smaller group every election cycle, is uh, suburban women, suburban married women, who are a group who you know, went against Trump and, and supported Biden's uh, presidency. If you look in all the key districts that were very close uh, and was expected to uh, to be a pro-Republican vote in November. And obviously we know that this issue is something that motivates a lot of voters, particularly women. And so it's, it's, it's quite possible that this will make a difference in some of those key races. Um, I, and and I, think, uh, I think this is yet another sign that we are just, it's never gonna get quiet and we're going to continue to be in a highly polarized, divisive time uh, in American politics. All right, Harry Nelson, managing partner of the LA law firm Nelson Hardman. Harry, thank you so much for your time today. Good speaking with you. Thank you.